Hi, this is Kim from Made by Mommy, and I'm back with my Rapid Pro instructions so that I can make my very first bracelet. These are some of the samples that they have in the guide, and I've decided I want to try and make this one. I've got all my materials ready, and let's see, the first thing it tells me to do is to cut a piece of cord 30 inches long, and really useful at the very bottom of this page they even gave me a ruler so if i want to get 30 inches of the cord i'll need to do this length three times so that's one two three a pair of scissors to cut that end off so that's step one and then i need to measure out my wrap line as well and the scissors again to cut 30 inches of the cord and 36 inches of the wrap line. Now, what's truly remarkable about the wrap line, when I cut it, it didn't have any fray at all. So this is gonna be really easy to put in the center of beads. Step one is folding the cord in half Step two is adding my button on. It says to insert both ends of the cord through the buttonholes. Mission accomplished. So, okay, slide it to the end and tie a knot. So you tie your first knot here to keep the button in place and then your second knot should be at about the length you're comfortable wearing a bracelet and you can either measure a bracelet you already have or use the ruler that's at the bottom of this page. And then you want to make two more knots that are wide enough for the button to fit through. That fits. That's going to be the basis of my bracelet. So there's no more C-clips or S-clips for this one. I think this is the best angle for you to see where the button and cord get placed in the clamp. So you're gonna slide the button in here, the bigger loop, and then the knot goes in between these pieces of plastic, there. So now that I have this side secured in the clamp, I need to get the clip ready, as they call it. So I've slid this side in where I have the knot, and I'm going to pull this back and it says to pull it until you hear three or four clicks. So now that's nice and tight too. Except I twisted it, which I probably wasn't supposed to do. Let's see if I can fix that. Learn from my mistakes. There we go. So I'm just gonna put my finger through to make sure they're not twisted, there. Okay, now it's not twisted. And now I'm going to pull it out. When I did that, this slipped out of place. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> this is a little bit fumbly. Okay. No, my button fell out again. <gasps> oh no, how'd that happen? Maybe, oh. That's why these rubber bands are here. I guess I'm supposed to be using those somehow. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Try again. Okay. So this time I'm going to feed I'm gonna try feeding the button through these rubber bands first. Maybe that'll keep this from popping out. It doesn't really say to do that in the instructions. Ugh, this is trickier than I thought. Button is now in place with those rubber bands as extra security. Putting the knot through the clamp. Making sure I didn't twist it again. Okay, and now let's try our three to four clicks. It got twisted again. One, two, three. Okay, that took a few tries, but I've got everything in place now. And now it's time to prepare my wrap line. So it's looking like you start on the side where the button is. Wrap around the side and bring it up the middle, like that. And then do the same on the other side. 
So now that's started, pull ends to tighten. Gently shake until the beads align in the track. Oops, I dropped one. <laughs> I'm not good at the whole gentle shaking thing. Come on, little beads. You can do it. Oh no. They're jumping off. Oh no. Okay, so for the pattern I'm making, I'm starting with the single blue beads. And I'm supposed to pick and thread the bead with one side of the string and then thread that same bead with the other side of the string. But which side do I come into? It must be this one. Okay. Ooh, there we go. Now we got that in place. Okay, and then you need to wrap the strings around. I just need to figure out which side I'm wrapping from. Am I coming underneath or over? Over the outside and in through the center on both sides. So over the outside and in through the center. So that's what it's supposed to look like. And now I need to do that again with two more of these little blue beads. Pull it tight. That looks nice and neat around the outside. I'm gonna wrap again. Bring the thread up the center pulling tight. And then it's time to add another bead. There's one. I'm getting better at this. <laughs> There's hope for me yet. One side and the other. Pull tight. I want it to come, I keep getting confused, over the outside. And now for my pattern, I've got one single pink and then we're gonna extend to two. So let's get our pink bead on here. Okay, then I'm gonna bring the strings over the outsides and through the center and pull tight. And now we're at the point where we're gonna put two pink beads. I've got one on my fingers now. I'm not sure that this makes things so much easier. I think I'm just gonna use my fingers. So now I'm gonna put two beads on. This is just, to me, this bead holder, it's awfully tippy. It's very easy to just knock it over. So that's the two beads coming in one side. And now I need to get the thread through those same two beads going the other way and pull it tight. There we go. And bring my string through the center. And back, oops, that's not right. So these need to go. that lined up, go over the outside and up through the center. And now they're secured. Clearly I just don't have the magic shake down. Yeah, I don't know that I'm gonna use this part of the shaker, but just having them laid out here is helpful. Okay, pull those tight so that they pop between the cord. See, now I've got one under and one over, there we go. Now they're both over. And wrap the thread around the sides of the cord, coming up and over the sides, through the center and back up. I'm starting to get the hang of this. It definitely has a bit of a learning curve, but I could see how once I'm sort of familiar with the mechanisms and I stop putting the string the wrong way to start, that this could move really fast and the result looks really cool. So now we're back to the two pink beads. You never wanna take both little points of your string and stick them through a bead because the string always goes through the bead one at a time from opposite directions and that's what creates this really neat finished result both of them. It's really important to keep track of where your cords are in terms of being above or below the side cords. So now I've got it in place and I can bring those both around the top and under and through the center. 
and keep going. Three more single blues and then I do another one of the diamond shapes. The first video I did on the Alpha Loom, when I look at back at it now, it's quite funny because that tool became so much easier to use with experience and I think that will be the same with this. And I'm happy to say that I think it's worth the learning curve on this tool. I'm really loving how this bracelet is coming out. It looks really beautiful. And uh, right now I'm moving slow, but I feel myself getting faster as I go. And I'm confident that these bracelets, once I've done a few, will be really quick to create. The box says eight plus. I think it really depends on your eight-year-old. I'll let Leah give this a try, but I think she would find this pretty frustrating. My older daughter, Claire, I'm sure would have an easier time. Again, it all depends on personalities, but eight definitely seems like a low estimate for me in age. I think it would be a fairly unique eight-year-old that had both the patience and the fine motor control to get this to come out right. Um, I'm excited to use it and to try out the patterns that they've suggested and then to try and create some of my own. I think there's a lot of really cool possibilities for this loom. Oh, I made a mistake. See, I talk too much and I make a mistake. <laughs> If you look here, see this string didn't come over and under. So I'm going to need to undo these two beads and go back a little bit. So as I said, yeah, this requires some concentration to get the pattern right. See, here's where this string was supposed to be over and through the center, and I didn't do that. But it's easy when you see your mistake, no big deal to undo just one spot you see the mistake right away. So it's not like you have to unwrap your entire project in order to go back and fix your errors. So I appreciate that because I know when people were following some of those intricate designs for the rainbow loom, when you put it on the loom, if you had one rubber band out of place in the middle, your whole construction came apart. I think adults and teenagers would definitely love this tool. I would think carefully before giving it to somebody in the eight to 10 range. I'm gonna keep playing with it and making more. I'd love to hear in the comments below if you're planning to order yourself one of these looms. They're available now at rainbowloom.com. Well, I'm gonna sign off to finish this bracelet because now it's just repeating the same steps over and over again until you get to the very end. Yeah, at the very end, you just tie this off and your bracelet's ready to wear. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you and I look forward to the chance to loom with you again soon. Bye-bye.